Good morning. Happy Monday morning. This is Pastor Mark Driscoll here with Prepare the Way Ministries. We're going through the book of Ephesians and the word all. Jesus Christ is all in all. He's Lord of all, King of all. He calls us to give him all as he has given all for us. But what does all that mean? How do we live fully in him and for him? Let's pray together. Father, in Jesus' name, we come to you thankful for your love and your grace. Lord, we pray that you direct us and lead us and guide us in your word, Lord. We pray that you give us peace in a season of much chaos, much division, Lord, much misunderstanding, much weariness. Lord God, we come to you and we ask that you would give us your peace. That you'd help us to give your peace to others, Lord, as you've given it to us. In Jesus' name, amen. And we've been, as I said, um, we've been going through a series in the book of Ephesians, Paul's letter to the Ephesians about uh, how the kingdom of heaven is here on the earth. Jesus has brought in a new reality in the earth, a new kingdom on earth. And he calls us to take hold of that kingdom. And to live in it. You know, the Bible says that there will be a day when the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ. And he shall reign forever and ever. That Christ has come announcing that he is now King of kings and Lord of lords. He has proven that through his resurrection from the dead. And he is coming back again. In the meantime, you and I are called to trust in his lordship, his leadership. And we're called to live out the kingdom of heaven, the values of the kingdom of heaven, the values of peace, love, justice, freedom, joy, hope, life. It flies in the face of everything that this world seems to be promoting, a world promoting division and chaos and brokenness and lostness and under the guise of kindness and tolerance, promoting all sorts of lawlessness and, and really death. But Jesus says, I've come that you might have life and have it to the fullest. You know, and, and so we're going through, in the book of Ephesians, we're going through all the uses of the word all. That Paul uses that about 25 times uh, in his letter to show that Christ is all in all. And in my life, he calls me to give him my all, trust him with all, and, and, and experience all that he has for me. We're in verse 21 of chapter 1, but before I read that verse, I want to read the, the beginning verses before that, verses 15 through 22, in order to give you the context. Paul is about to give a prayer. He's been talking about the redemption of God and the great plan that God has to unite heaven and earth in Jesus Christ, and, and that he is the heartbeat, he's the centerpiece of all history and into eternity. And so we're called to, to enter into that and believe that and celebrate his lordship, his leadership. We, we have someone who's over all and above all and in all and through all. And so Paul launches into a prayer for the people, the church in Ephesus. Let me read it to you. Starting in verse 15, he says, For this reason, because I've heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints, I do not cease to give thanks for you, Remembering you in my prayers. Now he's going to ask God for three things. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Having the eyes of our hearts enlightened, that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. What are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints. And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power toward us who believe according to the working of his great might. Now, Paul asked that God would open our eyes to all that God has done for us and that all the hope that he's called us to and the inheritance we have in Jesus Christ in heaven waiting for us and the power that God has given to all of his believers here on the earth. While we live here, we live in kingdom power, the power of the Holy Spirit. And then he begins to describe that and goes into great detail. That he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places. Far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and every name that is above, uh, that is named for not only in this age but also in the one to come. 
And he put all things under his feet and gave him his head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Now, we'll, let me back up because Paul is giving this wonderful prayer of God. Open the people's eyes to see what you've already done. Many times we're, we're so uh, anxious about the things that we want God to do that we've stopped recognizing what God has done. I know I fall into this sometimes myself. I'm always about this needs to happen. This needs to happen. And God says, but look what I've already done. I've given you eternal hope. I've given you an eternal inheritance. And I've given you eternal power. The same power that raised Christ from the dead lives in the believer in Jesus Christ. Now, that's that's a great prayer. And I... And, and, other situation, I'd love to spend time just unpacking that whole prayer. But there's one thing that we're going to talk about today in verse 21, where it says that he seated him at his right hand. When Christ rose from the dead and he ascended into heaven, he took a position of power at the right hand of God. Now, that doesn't literally mean he's sitting down on God's right hand, but it means he's sitting in the position of power and rule. Now, verse 21 begins to talk about that. Far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. So what's being said here? That Christ has all rule and authority over every dominion. That means every reign, every area of leadership in the world. Now I want to just stop and just ask you about how you are right now during this political season. How how you doing? How are you? You okay? Are you making it? Because a lot of us are having a hard time. Can I just tell you, I don't care who you're voting for. A lot of us are having a hard time. Um, we're, we're scared because we look at the frustration and the chaos. And can we just, let's just be honest. Um, I'm, I'm going to try to avoid any political commentary in any direction. But we're seeing a lot of confusion, aren't we? A lot of conflict, a lot of uh, second guessing and accusation and innuendo, and and people are not thinking. Oh, I'm so excited about the election. Uh, everybody's scared. Have you noticed? Like, I'm not sure who to vote for. And even if you've got it, you're devoted to one or the other, and you're, or maybe you're devoted against one or the other. There still isn't there. Let's just be honest. A sense of apprehension um, because we're we're we've just been through so much in the last several years of seeing the the failures of leadership in both sides, um, and we've seen failures. Let's just be honest of failures in political leadership, failures in religious leadership, failures in social leadership. And even domestically, leadership, many, many have seen, seen even their own families uh, just withering. The, fa the leadership has just fallen. You know, we're, we're in such a time when it's hard to find solid leadership. And no, I'm not running for anything. <laughs> um, and I'm not going to campaign for anybody. But I'm just saying this, that we're in a weird time, aren't we? And, and, and this is not the first time. We've had other times in history we've been, there, been here. It's not the first time. Um, and, and the world has always struggled with leadership. The world has always struggled and just kind of hoping for somebody to lead us in the right way. That's what the, the whole uh, hope of Messiah was, that one day a Messiah would come and actually lead us into the kingdom of heaven. Well, he came. His name is Jesus, and he is leading us, and he's given us hope. And I know that sometimes it's hard to keep your sanity I'm going to let you work out your own thoughts about election and who to vote for. I think you should do it prayerfully and just really seek the heart of God. Um, don't be swayed by the words of anybody. Just listen to God. Uh, honestly, and I'm not, I'm not trying to be sarcastic. In these days, you just never know what you're hearing and who you're hearing from. And you don't know who to trust. You don't know who to listen to. And, and, and there's so many sound bites and ads and innuendos. And, you know, you really, people of God... You're just going to have to get in your prayer closet. You're going to have to seek the Lord. And you're just going to have to ask God to direct you in choosing who you believe that God would have you vote for. Now, there's no such thing as a Christian party. Um, 
you're not more Christian or less Christian because I know people disagree with that on both sides, but it's just not true. Um, there are godly and ungodly people on both sides. Let's just be honest. Okay, so here's the thing. And there are godly and ungodly principles on both sides. There are godly and ungodly agendas on both sides. Here's the thing. We're kingdom people. We've got to first get centered, Christian. You're a kingdom person. Your kingdom is not of this world. you got to get that. What Paul is saying in this verse is that Jesus is the ruler over all things. And so when you're feeling frustrated and tired and confused and like, I don't know who to vote for. I don't even know if I should vote. I don't, I, you know, I totally get all that. And, and we're all feeling those kind of things. But here's the thing that, that gives me hope. Here's what gives me peace. That Jesus literally is over all rule and authority. He's over every dominion in this age and in the age to come. The Bible says that Christ humbled himself, becoming obedient to death on the cross. And then it says that God exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name. So that in the name of Jesus, every knee should bow and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Now, friends, there's two ways to look at that reality. You can look at it the religious way and just say, oh... Yes, Jesus is Lord, and not really mean anything. You know, you can just kind of, yeah, yeah, I believe that. Okay, so what? Or you can get a hold of the reality that God in Christ supersedes all rule and authority, and that ultimately every ruler, every leader, every person who's ever lived will, will kneel before him because he's Lord of all. And even no matter what happens on the world scale, not that we shouldn't care about it and pray about it and work for justice and righteousness and peace, yeah, of course we should do that. We're God's people. But do it with the confidence that Jesus Christ really will have the last word. And that Jesus Christ is not going to allow his kingdom to be destroyed. His kingdom will rule forever and ever. And you can be confident that whatever happens after November, Jesus will be Lord. He will continue to rule. He will continue to reign. And he will not be overthrown. He will not be removed from power and authority. And there will become a day when we will literally, literally see him face to face as he comes to reign and to rule forever and ever. And we can have that confidence that he really is over all. He, now, he doesn't condone everything every ruler does. God puts people in leadership, but then they will be accountable to him for what they do with that leadership. Paul was writing... At the time of Paul writing this letter, he was writing under the rulership of one of the most ridiculously insane rulers the world has ever known. Emperor Nero was, was not only grossly immoral and grossly the delusional and violent toward the church and really toward everybody else, that he even turned on his own kingdom. I mean, he, he was insane. And he wasn't the only insane emperor Rome ever had. Rome died from the inside, because, partly because of insane leadership. And that, that does cause me concern because we see so much leadership over the last decades that has been really ambiguous, hasn't it? I'm going to use that word. And so here's the thing. Uh, it, it causes us concern and it gets us frustrated. And when you see things happen in our country where it seems like, you know, why doesn't somebody step up and just lead this? You've seen it. And why doesn't somebody just do something about this? And people just seem to be standing around saying, well, there's, there's really nothing we can do but vote for me in the next election. And so and that happens on both sides. It's just it's crazy. And it's maddening to you and to me. Now, I don't want us to be disrespectful of those in authority. I don't want us to to throw off any leadership and say, oh, I'm just going to do whatever I want to do. No, we still have to submit to authority. Um, and we do as long as that authority does not call us away from our obedience to Christ. Now, when it calls us away from our obedience to Christ, then we have the duty to say, no, I serve the, the higher king and to stand with the king of kings above all. But here's the thing I want to say. In the midst of all that, take heart. Take heart. Don't give up. Don't don't let anger and, and cynicism 
uh, derail you from your call to represent the kingdom of heaven. You are a diplomat for a kingdom that will never end. You are a representative of a kingdom that will last forever. Because Jesus, it says, he is uh, he he's given a name above every name. His name is above Donald Trump. His name is above Joe Biden. His name is above Kamala Harris. His name is above every governor, every mayor, every community leader, every pastor, every church leader, every ruler, every international leader. His name is above every name. And it really is. And everybody's going to bow before him. I would say that if you're in power, if you're in leadership, make sure that you're bowing your knee to the real king. Make sure that you're humbling yourself before the true God. Because uh, trying to, to lead apart from God, you know, leader, you will be held accountable for what you do in terms of leadership. If you use your leadership simply to, to gain power for yourself and privilege for yourself, and you ignore those that God has placed in your care, you will answer to God for that. But if you faithfully serve, and now you'll make mistakes, we'll all make mistakes, but if you faithfully serve your king by serving the people you were called to serve and really serving them, not trying to force your ideas on them or manipulate your desires from them, but sit truly seeking to serve them, God will bless your leadership. If you're a follower, take heart. Take heart. Jesus is Lord, and he's over all of it. Uh, I don't know what the future holds, as the old saying goes, but I know who holds the future. That's a reminder we all need. Today, I want to just simply remind you of this, that he is the one who's been lifted above all rule and authority and over every dominion, above every name that is named, every country, every nation. He's over the United States. He's over China. He's over Iran. He's over Russia. He's over all of these. And you might say, well, why are these people not doing right? You know, God gives them the responsibility to, to, choose, to follow him or not. And they will be held accountable. And those leaders that have rejected God, and we have a lot of them, they will stand before God. Pray for your leaders. Number one, pray that they repent. Pray that your leaders turn from godless leadership. Turn from godless evil and immorality and lawlessness. Turn to God. And pray for those godly leaders who are, in fact, seeking the kingdom of God. Those leaders that really are serving. Sometimes they get overshadowed by the people who just don't care. The, the great leaders, the, the leaders with heart and soul for God. I don't mean the leaders who pretend to love God so they can get votes. But I mean the ones you see even out of the election season who were living for God. Those who are faithful all the time. Those who were faithful before they got in office. Those who are faithful while they're carrying out their responsibilities. Not those who just wave a Bible or say a prayer or quote a verse to get you to vote. But those who truly live day by day by the principles of the kingdom of heaven. Those that seek after God. And we don't have very many, but we need to pray for those that do. We need to pray for our leaders that God will strengthen those who are godly and he will deal with those who are not godly. And it's not wrong to pray for God to remove evil leadership and replace it with righteous leadership. It's not wrong. And so be prayerful about that. All of my thoughts are this, this, though. I want you to listen. Take heart. Don't give up. Don't get discouraged. Don't throw away your confidence. Because Jesus Christ is, in fact, on the throne. And he is dismantling the kingdom of darkness a little bit at a time. And part of the way he does that is through your prayers. Part of the way he uproots the kingdom of darkness is through the prayers and obedient faith and life of his people. Now we're all going to feel called to be engaged in the political process to some degree or another. Some will say, my way is to step back and just pray. Others will say, no, I'm called to get in and make a difference. Whatever your call, don't criticize those who aren't sharing your call. Just let's all do what we're called to do together. Let's all say, you know what, Here's what I'm going to do what God's calling me to do. And I'm going to trust you to do what God's calling you to do. And let's just stay focused on the word of God that calls us to love one another, to be faithful unto him, and to proclaim the gospel above everything else. Everything else is, is secondary to the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
Now, here's the last thing I want to say to those that have never bowed their knee to the Lord Jesus. I want you to understand something, that he does love you. He came to earth and he died for you on the cross. He died to pay the price for your sin because your sin is going to bring you into the judgment and wrath of God if something isn't done. It's time for you to turn to God from your sin. It's time for you to stop blaming the church, blaming religion, blaming your problems on God and start turning from your sins because your sins have gotten you to where you are today. It's your sin that has brought you to this place. And God loves you and he's calling you to turn to him. The Bible tells us that every one of us will stand before the Lord Jesus Christ. We will either stand before him as his followers and hear him say, well done, good and faithful servant. Or we'll stand before him as our judge and have him say, depart from me, I never knew you. And the difference will be one thing. Not whether you're good or bad. The difference will be, have you repented of your sins? And do you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ? And are you seeking to follow him wholeheartedly? This is the call of the gospel. And I want to challenge you today, if you don't know him, I want you to understand that he is on the throne and he is Lord of all. If you're looking for security and stability, don't look to a donkey or an elephant. Look to the Lamb. Look to the Lamb of God who took, takes away the sins of the world. That's where you're going to find hope. That's where you're going to find peace. You're not going to find it in all the things we, we've seen for years. How all the institutions we trusted in have just shown that they are not reliable. You can't trust them. But you can trust Jesus. You can trust the kingdom of heaven. You can't even trust religion. You can trust him, Jesus. Trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. He died for you and rose from the dead. Put your faith in him. Turn to him. Join with others who are following him. Begin to pray and seek God in his word. And begin to grow in your faith. And be the light that God called you to be. Friend, let's remember who's on the throne today. Let's remember that Zion Hill is higher than Capitol Hill. That the will of God is greater than the will of man. And we can trust in him. Today, go out in confidence. Go out in confidence that the Lord Jesus Christ is reigning and ruling above all things. And if you've not trusted him yet, God's calling you. Turn to him and believe. God bless you. Go in peace.